Batteries keep your drones in the sky, but if that battery fails, your drone's dropping out of the sky. That's why you need to watch this ultimate guide on looking after your drone batteries. Hi, I'm Ashton Droning On, and recently I keep seeing photos of swollen, damaged, and bloated batteries. And not necessarily is that the fault of the manufacturer, sometimes it's simply down to maluse by the consumer. For that reason, there's a number of tips that you can follow to make sure that your drone batteries stay healthy and safe, because ultimately, if those batteries fail, so does your drone. And nobody wants a one kilogram Mavic 2 dropping on their head. So in this guide, we're gonna run through the top tips for looking after your drone batteries. If you enjoy this content, smash that subscribe button below, because there are lots of other tutorials like this coming very soon. Anyway, let's get on with the guide. When you first unpack your drone and start flying, you're gonna be eager to fly that battery as much as you can and as hard as you can, but that's really not good for a brand new battery pack. When you first get those batteries, they're in storage mode and they've not been used, so make sure you give the battery time to bed in and get used to its recharge cycle. And by depleting it just down to 30% for at least the first 10 flights, you're gonna give that battery a bit of an easier ride to scaling up for harder use. Kind of related to the previous one, when you're up there flying, it's easy to get carried away and wait for your drone to invoke return mode, which normally triggers at quite a low battery percentage, but don't do it. After you've completed those first 10 recharge cycles, make a habit of not flying the drone below 20%, because not only are you then protecting your batteries, but you're also flying much safer. It's always important to have more battery charge available when you land than to land with nothing available. If when returning to home you encounter wind, you're gonna need that extra battery charge to make sure you get your drone home. In addition, by not depleting them below 20%, you're just giving that battery an easier ride. When under load, lithium polymer batteries can get very warm, and I literally mean so hot that you can barely touch them. But remember, with these DJI battery packs, they're tucked away inside a plastic case, and so it's not always easy to understand just how warm that battery really is. When flying in hot weather, that situation becomes even worse because not only is the battery under load and generating heat, but it's also being heated by the inherent weather. It's all good to push these drones to their limits and fly them to the manufacturer's specification in terms of temperature, but be careful because ultimately it's your drone. And if you're flying that drone in severely hot weather, then potentially you can push something to fail and for the battery to pop. Connected to the previous point is flying stationary in hot weather. Do you remember that when the drone is moving forward, you've got natural airflow over the drone. And even in hot weather, the airflow of a drone flying at maximum speed can be enough to cool that battery on top just enough to keep it under control. If, however, you're not flying around and instead you're hovering statically for 20 or 30 minutes with the sun beating down on top of that drone directly onto the battery, then the battery is going to get very, very hot. Heating a lithium polymer battery up beyond specification can cause bloating and swelling of the battery, and that can kill the battery. As mentioned earlier, when under load, lithium polymer batteries do get very hot. And when you finish flying for that day, don't pack that battery straight into your bag. The reason is the battery can't cool down. And for the lithium polymer battery to last and have longevity, it needs to be able to be cooled down calmly. If you put that hot battery straight into an insulated bag, the battery can't cool down. And again, that can cause bloating and swelling of the battery. And it'll also, of course, effectively reduce its life. I always recommend after flying to disconnect the battery from the drone, let that battery cool down in a shaded place first, and then pack it all away once it's at a temperature that's fair. Only charge your batteries up if you intend to fly within a day or two, because it's never healthy for a lithium polymer battery to be at full charge and left at full charge indefinitely. Now, DJI batteries do have an automatic discharge if you leave them fully charged for a certain period of time. But the key thing here is don't fully charge them in the first place unless you actually intend on flying. As a rule of thumb, leave your batteries at 30 or 40 percentage charge and charge them up when you intend to go flying. Otherwise, leave them at that storage charge. Now this one's really important. Before you fly, inspect your batteries. And don't fly that battery if it's dented, swelling, or bulging. 
Most of the DJI batteries have a very angular design and so it's very clear and easy to see if the battery has started swelling and if it has, do not fly it. In fact, dispose of it safely at your local refuse collection area. It's very important that you don't just throw these batteries in the bin, they must be recycled properly. It can pain you to throw away a DJI battery if it is dented or damaged because they do cost over $100 normally, but you have to be safe here because ultimately denting and bulging can mean a battery that might be about to fail. And if it fails when your drone is up there flying in the sky, then you don't just lose a battery, you're gonna lose a drone as well and potentially cause a lot of damage when that drone falls from the sky. Now this is a good one, number your batteries. If you've bought three batteries, place a number label on them, one, two, and three. That helps you to make sure that you're using them evenly, because if you always pick up the same battery time after time, then you're neglecting the other battery, and eventually that battery potentially might fail if it's not been charged or not been cycled properly. It's just good practice to use batteries evenly if you've bought more than one, and numbering them can definitely help you to do that. And finally, don't overbuy your batteries. It's very tempting to buy the Flymore Combo because it comes with three batteries, but personally, having bought the Flymore Combo for almost every drone that I own, I can't say honestly that I've ever been out on an occasion where I actually flew all three batteries in one session. Now for the absolute drone addicts out there, it might be that you genuinely do need that kind of capacity, but I guarantee that for most of you out there, especially with flight times of up to 30 minutes now, you generally only need two. These batteries aren't cheap, so I always recommend that you buy two and see how you get on. You can always buy another. So that's our guide to looking after your drone batteries. Be sure to follow it and also to share this to groups because many people really do neglect their drone batteries. And ultimately, these batteries aren't cheap. It's in our interest to look after them. If you feel that this was useful, comment below and of course smash that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if your face is bulging. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, mm -hmm.